Kanye West, Jesus is King. Was it that bad? Well, it came out in 2019 now. It's been a few years. This is a series where we're revisiting some artists' worst albums. We could have probably had Donda 2 in here, but it wasn't publicly released. So we decided to go with Jesus is King. Should we jump in with the first track? The first track is Every Hour featuring the Sunday Service Choir. What did you think? I thought this was okay. As a gospel religious themed album, this is kind of the introduction that I was expecting. I thought it was quite funky. Did a good job of introducing what you could expect to come later on in the album. What did you think? So I was waiting for the beat to kick in throughout the entire track. And as an intro track, it works nicely. But all I could think was, where's Ye? And that doesn't necessarily mean he has to be on the intro track, but it felt like it was building to something that it never reached. I do know what you mean. But the next track in Cellar was very good, in my opinion. It was good, but the transition into it, let's just talk about that quickly. It, the first track ends and it immediately hits into this track and there's zero transition, which there is on other tracks. So I didn't really understand what he was going for with this. I think this is because it was switching from the, the more gospel introduction to actually proper tracks, as you say, where Ye is actually going to be featured. But for me, I thought this kind of felt like something you'd hear in a Gladiator movie. I really liked the production of this song. I liked how the song was put together. What I didn't like was the quality of the mix. And that's something that is throughout this album where you Ye's vocals are really fucking weird. Like, it genuinely sounds like he's recorded through an iPhone microphone for, like, half of the tracks. I don't know if I'd go that far. I actually think the production throughout this album is better than some of the more recent, than Vultures, mm, both yeah, Vultures well, albums. Yeah, maybe so, but the big three drum hits that start coming in later in this track, I think it's about midway through, it's like, dun-dun-dun, like that. That's louder than everything else, and it drowns out what Ye's even saying, so I really struggle to hear much of any. Everything's muddled together, it's very muddled. But I think that was kind of my point when I said it kind of feels like something out of a movie because it, it, it does have those huge drums and stuff throughout. Uh, and there was one line that really upset me and it said, everybody wanted Yandy, then Jesus Christ did the laundry. Mm. Rest in peace to Yandy. That would have been so much better. It would have been tenfold better. And I think that's one of the main reasons why people didn't like this album initially because we were all teased and kind of promoted with Yandy. I think even Kim Kardashian put out a, a thing saying, you know, Yandy's coming. And it never did. And then we ended up with this gospel Jesus-led album, which a lot of people were initially put off from off the get-go because they wanted Yandy. It was really sad, but we did follow God. What did you think of that track? Awful mixing again. Awful, awful mixing. This is a banger. Mm. This, this, in my opinion, top two tracks off the album. Really cool sample. Funky little beat. Doesn't go on too long. It's a little bit repetitive in terms of the instrumental. But I thought, to me, this felt like old school year where he's picked up a good sample and just created a, a good little rap track. Yeah, so the beat itself was really good. I, I was bobbing my head along to the track. But again, it's it's the mixing for me that ruins a lot of the tracks on this album. Um, and Kanye's flow and his bars on this track are very simplistic. And I think it kind of weighs down the track as a whole. I think there was so much potential in this track that it didn't quite get. I really liked it. I, I genuinely think that this could fit in. If this was in one of the older Ye albums, I don't think it'd be that out of place. One thing to talk about on this track is it ends with a Five Nights at Freddy ass scream. Like, ah, at the end. And I don't understand that. But that's something that kind of lends itself to other tracks where people question if it's Yay, For example, Fourth Dimension by Kids See Ghosts. That laughing in the middle, everyone's like, that's not Yay, And it's like, oh, motherfucker, that's Yay. <laughs> like, Yay is fucking crazy. Moving off that track, we go into Closed on Sunday. Chick-fil-A! Do you know, I like this song. It feels jokey. It feels fun. But at the same time... It's got a dark feel to it with the instrumental. You know, there's there's some, I don't know, I, f I almost feel like crushing moments in there where you're like, ooh. Mm -hmm. But I think that in terms of a year track, this is the best on the album. He he really likes referencing like fast food stuff. So he, he closed on Sunday, you're my Chick-fil-A. And then later on we got, yeah, you're the king, Burger King. <laughs> I just I just love it when he does these bars that on the surface seem shit. But then when you actually listen to them a few times, you go, no, that's actually quite hard. That's quite hard. But about one minute 30 in, there was a beeping sound that started in the background. And all I could think was I was in my car and I'd left the door open. <laughs> it throughout the whole, and it really put me off because I couldn't not hear that that over everything else it wasn't that intrusive but it's one of those things that once you've heard it you can't unhear it but to be honest at this point in the album i was thinking this has been a very good f i thought anyway this has been a very good introduction the first couple songs to me were definitely up there in terms of i think most of these had 
great production value, pretty good bars, weren't too religious themed, but still had those undertones. And I was like, okay, maybe this album isn't as bad as I originally remembered it. And then we move on to On God. This is potentially my favourite track off the album, I think. The beat on this goes oh so hard. You're a strange guy sometimes, oh, you know. That I've literally wrote down for this. Feels like the type of beat you'd hear if you typed in Mario type beat on YouTube. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, Rainbow Road ass beat. <laughs> Ye's flow and delivery on this track is easily the best across the album, in my opinion. This is this is this is the track that features Ye the best. It puts him in the best light. I do think that his flow is good on this. I just, for me, I liked the beat at first, but by the end of the song, it was kind of doing my head in. I wish there was a little beat switch just for the last minute or 30 seconds. I'd say this is probably what feels the most to like mid-2010s era yay mm. for me. This feels like he's brought it back a little bit, but not too far. We're not talking 2000s yay, just like, you know, mid, mid-2010s mid around there. And then after this, I'd, I'd, the less said about that, the better. But one thing I want to mention as well, I have thought so far in the album, at least in this run of tracks, it's transitioned between them very well. Like it has actually flowed quite well as an album. Mm -hmm. I've not felt too disjointed. Yeah, there's not been really much like neck breaking and go, oh, what's going on here? What's going on here? Other than the first of the second track, which yeah. is very abrupt. But outside of that, I think the transitions have been quite good. And then we go on to Everything We Need featuring Ty Dollar Sign, a little snippet of what's going to happen in the future. And if this had made Vultures, I think it would have been a great album. Yeah, this really, is better yeah. than 80% of Vultures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our overall tracks combined. Yeah, yeah. I thought this was this was a nice track. The two worked well together here. And I can see with this chemistry why they would decide to go on and do collaboration projects in the future. But this is better than those projects. This is a track, though, where I notice the microphone quality swapping throughout the track. So after the chorus, it genuinely feels like... Yeah, he just phoned in his verse down a fucking phone line or something. It just, the quality just drops off entirely for his vocals. And, and I think that's a theme throughout this album. I don't really know what he was doing. See, I really didn't notice this. I don't mm. know if it's because I was listening in a different environment than you, but I genuinely didn't really hear. There was a few problems with the mixing in terms of certain instruments being too loud or too quiet, but I didn't have any problem with the vocals for the majority of this album. Fair but enough. again, maybe that's just down to circumstance. We'll move on to the next track, which is Water. So this is featuring Ant Clemens, who was also on the last track. And you were saying that uh, the previous track had a video game type beat. I would say this is something that would definitely come from a video game like Pause Screen from like the 90s. It genuinely just, the beat... I didn't hate the beat, but all I could think was, am I playing Sonic the Hedgehog or something? To be honest, this was the first track that was super religion heavy, uh, it, at least in an obvious way in terms of lyricism. For me, because I'm not religious, this just felt like glazing Jesus for a whole track, which that's that's fine for people that want to listen to a gospel album, but for me, it just didn't work. So you can you can do different things where you don't have to make it so preachy and make it sound like something you'd hear in a church sermon or like, you know, you're listening to it in school or something like that. And this track doesn't feel like he's tried that. Like we've had like Jesus Walks and stuff like that, which was really good. And is it, it takes a, like a new stance on religion. This is just through and through Jesus, 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 very repetitive lyrics throughout, regardless of the content. And Ye just sounds bored. Yeah, just, it's, the delivery is just like he's just going, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's a real shame for me because I thought the instrumental was good, uh, the feature worked well, the singing from was it Aunt Clemens? Incredible. His vocals at the start, which last the first minute and 10 seconds of the track, are probably the best thing about the track. Mm -hmm. uh, I, with this instrumental, they could have done so much more. Yes, definitely. Yeah, moving off that though, we've got God is. God is. This kind of carries on with more slow, chill vibes. I. Kanye singing is just strange to me and especially I appreciate he's trying something new here but especially towards the end of the track you could I think it was purposeful but you could hear his voice like struggling mm. like it was getting croaky and I guess that they left that in on purpose but it just really didn't oh so for me, I, I thought there was a lot of weird auto-tune on Ye's voice, clearly to help him out with the singing, because I don't think he's the greatest singer. I mean, I, I can't say, but in my opinion, I don't imagine he's that good. Uh, but I do like this track because it feels very full of emotion. And if there's one thing that I really like is an emotional Ye track. So I didn't hate it. 
I didn't exactly love it, but I thought, you know what? He's actually tried something here. He's pushed the boat out. He's kind of put his heart on his sleeve type beat. And, you know, I, yeah, I thought it was all right. Yeah, that's what, when I say I appreciate he's tried something new, you've got to do that as an artist. You've got to test the waters. And it wasn't a horrible track. Mm. It just could have worked better with mm. a couple bars thrown in there along with some of the singing. We move on to Hands On. What did this you think is, of that? This is featuring Fred Hammond. Uh, very repetitive lyrics again, and it just feels like nothing happens on this track. The production for the first 20 seconds had me hopeful. It was like, oh, this could be a banger. And then it just went into a bunch of introspective bars about Ye's life that felt more like a ramble. This felt more like something we'd hear on some of the more recent tracks and projects. Like if this was on Donda 2 or Vultures 2, it really wouldn't surprise me because it didn't have much cohesion. Yeah, he changes flow at about 1 minute 30 in and I was like, oh, here we go, here we go. He's going to do something with it. And it, again, it goes nowhere. It but just builds up to a whole lot of nothing. This is a track you would never put on. Yes. Like you'd never yes. play this. Imagine you're at a party or something, you're with the boys, you're never going to play this no, track. Because they'd fucking snatch the orcs off you and say, right, that's it. No more fucking music from you, lad. But up next, and this is the last proper song on the album, really, is Use This Gospel, which features clips, which is Pusha T and his brother and Kenny G. What do you think of this one? I thought Pusha T and uh, No Malice's verses on this were really fucking good, you know. I'd really enjoyed them. I think the Pusha-Kanye relationship in terms of music has always been elite. Whenever them two have worked together, they have produced absolutely absolute bangers obviously features on Kitsy Ghost album Kanye produced Daytona which is widely respected as Pusha T's best and one of the best rap projects of the last decade I I think this is good I think this is a great way to close out the album and I'm quite happy that I feel like there was this middle section where there was a lack of bars this really hit home in terms of being a solidified Kanye and Pusher track. This is the track where the beeping is in it that sounds like somebody left the car door open. The one earlier I actually thought went quite hard. I got these two confused in my notes. Mm. This is the one where it's just beep, 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 and it just does my absolute head in. And here is my interesting fact of the album for you. Do you know that beep is a guitar note? On repeat, that is a sample from a Two Door Cinema Club song from their first album. No way. Which, which absolutely baffled. It's one of the less popular tracks like it, from like the album. Like a deep cut from a Two Door Cinema Club. Yeah. Why? So, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so Kanye West actually sampled Two Door Cinema Club on this track. The fact that that has even happened just blew my mind. How and why? For that for that tiny bit, why couldn't you just recreate that and do it yourself? Why would you need to sample that shit? I don't know. I, that's bizarre. That's but Kenny G's solo at the end of this, fucking phenomenal. And yeah. I expected nothing less because it's Kenny G, he's a worldwide known saxophonist, and I just think anything that he touches turns into gold. He should have been featured more throughout the album and it probably would have brought it up a bit, to be honest. I completely agree. Clearly a talented musician. And I actually thought the last snippet, the last 20, 30 seconds where it kicked back into the beat went hard mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But that's where it kind of goes, oh, we should have used that on some of the rest of the tracks as well. We go on to the last kind of segment of the album and that is Jesus is Lord, which is effectively just another glazing session to close out the album. For me, a completely unnecessary track. Uh, and they should have used this after use this gospel that should have been in the flow higher up the album this feels like something that would have fit in easier yeah but at the same time when it is an album centered around religion you kind of have to expect it to finish on a note like this in reality as much as it upsets me from a music listening standpoint and an album experience standpoint what else did we expect from a gospel album? I do think the album should have ended after Use This Gospel, though, and I think this could have been a contender as a better intro than Every Hour. I think if they'd have put this at the beginning and got rid of Every Hour, maybe put that at the end, it would have flowed much nicer, and Every Hour would have worked as a nicer outro track with the Sunday service choir on there, kind of bringing everything to a head nicely. This just feels like... I'm starting listening to a new album. When this came on, I thought my like Spotify had auto-played something else, but no, this was the last track on the album. A very strange way to start and end the album, but maybe that was done on purpose to make you think at both of those points. Maybe. Switch or up the vibes completely for, at the right at the start and right at the end, and maybe the thought process creatively was to make people actually go, ooh, this is a bit weird, maybe I should listen to this. It could be, but then I think you might be giving Ye too much credit, and I think he just kind of threw this at the end because he liked the track. But going on to the album as a whole, this is kind of why I disagree with your point there. I think this era of Ye is looked back upon in a weird way because I remember at the time, artistically, I think Ye was maybe in a 
completely unique space in comparison to the rest of his career. Because I remember they were doing Sunday service like every week. They even managed to get it at Coachella. Most people remember the famous scene where they're on top of the hill at Coachella. But those clips were going viral. That was massive. But at the same time this album released, Kanye actually also released a short film in IMAX to go along with this that I went to watch at the cinema uh, in Leeds, England, which is weird that it even made it here. But there was a lot that went into this. The music videos for Saleh and for Follow God were really good, really high production. And I think it's a shame that some of the tracks were misses, but I think the artistic direction of Kanye West trying to do a gospel album at the time was actually executed very successfully. I think that Ye lacks anything resembling depth on this album. It's all very surface level religion based content. There's nothing interesting. I think if he'd have taken a more creative and a more unique approach to religion like he has done in the past, this album would have been infinitely better. But every track just feels like, again, something you could hear within a church church service which I get is the idea of the album I do get that but as a Kanye album you kind of expect something a little bit more adventurous maybe something a little bit more experimental he's kind of you know the the way that he talks about his relationship with God on tracks in the past has been a lot more creative and different to what we've heard before whereas this whole album feels like every track he's saying pretty much the same thing I kind of disagree with you. I think the last half of the album feels like that and feels like something you'd hear in a church. But for me, when you go from Saleh to Follow God to Closed on Sunday to On God to Everything We Need, that five track span for me is something that is just like a, a decent set of hip hop or rap songs. I don't think there's elements of those that could be played in churches and, and you know, maybe used to a more religious extent. But for me, they're just tracks. They're just year tracks. And then after that point is where it becomes heavily focused on religion. But I, I don't think that the majority of this is too heavy on it. I think the way that religion is referenced is actually done in a calm and quite a good way in that first section of the album if you throw away the opening track. Well, moving away from religion, talking about the album as a whole, the mixing throughout, again, is atrocious. And in uh, January of 2020, Kanye did an interview with GQ uh, and basically said that 20% of the album was actually recorded on his iPhone. So he confirmed that he did use an iPhone for that. And to me, that's insane. When, you know, there's, there's pictures of him in the studio and he's got the C8000 or whatever it is, the like $15,000 microphone next to him. Why aren't you using that shit? And I get it, it's probably because he was on, you know, his ranch doing stuff and he thought, oh, these are good bars, I'll record them in my iPhone. And then just never got around to re-recording them. But you think... If you're going to release an album, put a bit more effort into it. Don't don't come through with the iPhone bars. iPhone bars, what are you doing? Now, I agree, that is lazy, and some of the mixing was poor. But simultaneously, I actually think a lot of the instrumentals on this album were very good. And maybe the last time, obviously Donda was good, but Donda took a fair few revisions before even the instrumentals sounded like they were produced properly. So I think this, in terms of Kanye being a producer was actually quite good. It was just a shame some of the mixing for the for the lyrics wasn't as good. You can't help but compare it to other Yay projects, though. That's the problem. When, when we're reviewing these albums, we kind of have to take it in the way that, you know, this is one of this artist's albums. And in comparison, in the very least, it has to be admitted that this is an inferior album compared to everything else in his discography. Not everything else. Well, okay, newer stuff, yeah. Pr prior to this, this was the weakest album. Yeah, this was the weakest at release. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 100%. There's definitely been weaker since, but they're so recent that we can't even talk about them because everybody and their mothers spoke about how terrible those are. It's just accepted. But the question is, Tim, was it that bad? Unfortunately, I do think it was that bad. What about you? I actually don't think it was. Having gone back and re-listened to this... I don't. I wouldn't say I found a newfound love for it, and you'll see by my rating in a second. I'm not saying it's amazing, but I don't think it was as bad or that bad in the way that it was made out in the moment. Just for that five track run that is really good, and it's only a half an hour album, so that's like half the album that I think is actually pretty good. And if I can get that out of an album, then I wouldn't say it's that bad. I think the thing that, again, I mentioned this earlier, is that we were going to get Yandy. So mm -hmm. the initial response to it was terrible. Regardless of it being a religious album, it wasn't Yandy. He could have released anything that wasn't Yandy and people would have been annoyed about it. What made it worse is that it was an album that you could argue is not even in his realm of normal albums. So when everyone's expecting this great project and they end up with this, 
Oh, I can completely understand people's frustration. But what would you give this album out of 10? I'd give this album a five out of 10. Oh, I think that's a bit high. Now, because I liked five of the tracks. Right, yeah. That, that, yeah. that was actually my yeah. thought. When I went back and looked at this, I thought if five of these tracks were on my playlist, I wouldn't skip them. And then, I mean, that's actually more than half if you take away the intro and outro. So for me, I was like, I think a five is, is very fair. So for me, I've gone in with a four, a solid four. And the reason for that is, I mean, if you want to go down that route, I'd say there's only three or four tracks that I like off the album. But I really don't think any of them hit my playlist. I don't think there's a single track on this album where I've gone, oh, that goes hard. There's albums I can appreciate. There's songs I can appreciate and songs that I can get behind and go, you know what, the beat on this goes fire. The, the Ye's flow and his lyricism is really good, but there's nothing where it all comes together and you go, you know what, that's a classic Kanye track. I don't think any track off this album would be in his top 20 songs. No, I agree. But that, for me, doesn't make them particularly bad still. Mm, yeah, I, I'm seeing it in the grand scheme of Ye. Uh, so yeah, four from me. Fair enough. Well, if you enjoyed this video, we recently did the same thing for Eminem's revival. So go check that out. It'll be linked at the end of this video. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Peace.